Well, good morning, Latip. It's nice to be here in front of so many fine people once again. It's been about six months or so. And once again, I would like to talk about what it is we do and how we do it differently from some of the other outfits out there. And uh, you may recall that it's, uh, we call it the design build concept. And uh, that is where we work with the client on the design. There's no architect involved. Uh, we work directly with the client to help them design the project. And every step of the way, we're helping them with the budget. The big difference between this way of doing things and the architect is with an architect, typically the folks tell the architect what they want, the architect draws it, and then they put it out to bid. And virtually every time, it doesn't fit their budget. So in the meantime, they've spent a ton of money on the architect, and now they have to redo it. That doesn't happen with a design build concept. And that is a perfect example, uh, if you've seen that, if you haven't, take a look at it um, before you leave today. Uh, that looks like a simple family room addition over there, um, but it's not. It's actually very complex. Um, I was originally called out to bid on a big two-story addition. I had done a project around the corner from them 10 years ago, big two-story with a family room in the back, and um, they loved it and wanted something similar. And as I was about to leave on that first appointment, they said, yeah, um, we're interested in the price. I think they told us it was about 65 grand to do what you did over there. And I'm thinking, we added two bedrooms, an exercise room, two bathrooms upstairs above the house, and a family room downstairs, and I'm thinking, I think it's way more than that, but I'll get back to you. It was about $200,000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, obviously we, we refocused, and originally the, um, the family room in the back, they called a sunroom. We, wanted, we want a sunroom in the back. And the whole time I'm thinking, well, we don't do sunrooms. Sunrooms are those you know, pitched, pitched rooms that are, it's all glass with a little bit of uh, metal in between and the whole, the whole roof is glass as well. Um, they're hot boxes. I mean, in the summertime, you can't really live in there because it's way too hot and in the wintertime, it's too cold. We tear a lot of those down and build regular family rooms. So I wasn't paying too much attention to the family room portion of it. I was paying attention to the second floor. And then when they decided, well, we're not going to do that. Let's just do the sunroom. We refocused and began um, designing that. And uh, in discussions with my designer and the energy engineer, they both said, we can't put that much glass in there. It's not allowed. The, the state regulations for energy efficiency, may even be a federal re regulation, is not going to allow that much glass. And I said, well, let's try it. Let's test it. So we did a, we pre-engineered it, which we t typically don't do. We pre-engineered it, spent a couple hundred bucks, and the guy came back and said, it works. We can actually do it. But you have to re-insulate the entire existing house. Not a big deal. So the, the room addition that we're building um, has so much glass uh, in windows and patio door and skylights that it's less efficient than what they would like, but we can offset that by making the existing house more efficient. So we're able to make it work. The second challenge was the, the walls are 10 feet tall uh, instead of eight, and um, there's so much glass, we have no way of bracing this building. So uh, we came up with a design that included two steel columns out in the corners buried in a bunch of concrete, and that stiffens the building, and it allows us to do that. The, the whole point was we did all of this before we ever signed a contract with them and before we did a full set of drawings and engineering and spent thousands of dollars to find out that it was going to be out of their budget. We, every step of the way, I would reprice it and say, this is where you're at now. Does it make sense to continue? And it made sense and we continued. With an architect, they would have drawn it up probably differently because we made changes along the way to bring it back down into the budget. We shrunk the addition a little bit, uh, did some other things. Um, but that is the major difference between um, design build, which is what we do, and getting an architect to do it and then getting bids. I happen to be working with a client in La Mirada right now um, that had already hired an architect. And 
it's been, my first contact with them was about four weeks ago. And at that point, it was a Tuesday, and they said, we're supposed to have our drawings done and submitted to the city by Friday. I said, great, when you do that, give me a set of drawings and I'll bid it for you. So I called them back the next Tuesday, oh, we don't have it yet, the engineer made a mistake. Okay, when are you gonna have it? By the end of this week. Call them next week, didn't have it. Call them next week. It's been four weeks, still not done. So that is not atypical for an architect and an engineer. Um, they're just not good at doing room additions and remodeling. They're fantastic at bridges and skyscrapers and, and buildings of that nature, but for room additions, um, they cost a fortune and they're really not that good. And they always over-engineer it. So not only do you spend two, three, four thousand dollars more on the drawings and the engineering, but then the, the way they engineer it, you're going to have construction costs of probably more, more like two, three, four thousand dollars more uh, in addition. So uh, it's really not the best way to do it. So uh, again, the advantages of design build would be a streamlined, faster process. We can also do it a lot faster than the architect can do it. Uh, and keep in mind, the typical architecture firm, the architect, the big guy or a big woman who's got the degree, they're not drawing them. They come out, meet with you, get your information, and they've got somebody else drawing the drawings and they're overseeing it. So you're not even getting, you know, necessarily the architect uh, doing the work. Um, it's also less expensive to do design build, and you get ac accurate budgeting along the way, which you don't get with an architect. They have no clue, uh, nor should they, no clue what things are going to cost. So um, that's the way we do things. Uh, we've been doing it for 46 years now. Uh, in fact, I'm going on an appointment uh, this morning after Le Tip uh, up in Whittier. Um, on a, uh, a bath remodel for somebody whose friend had work done by my father back in the late 60s or early 70s. Wow. Yeah. So, um, and, th and that's typical. Um, about 90 to 95 percent of our work is referral um, or previous customer or somebody around the corner. Uh, that is virtually <coughs> all of our work. Um, we like it that way. We don't send out the, the flyers. We don't go door to door and send out the flyers. We don't have a sales team. Um, I, I never will have a sales team. Uh, it will always be me going out and consulting with people. Um, it will always be me running the projects from beginning to end. Uh, there are so many details. Just uh, like I said, go take a look at that. There are three sheets of details. The details are basically this corner blown up so you can see all of the little nails and bolts and screws and everything that go into it. There are three sheets of details on that project. Um, and all of that needs to be done. If it's not done and the building fails, guess who's in trouble? Me. So I won't allow anybody else to supervise my projects. I'm going to make sure that every nail gets put in there, every screw, every bolt. Um, it's the only way I want to do it. I can't get big that way. Um, I don't want to get big. I want, to, I want to sleep at night, I want to know that every single one of my projects is done according to the drawings, done according to code, and done according to the wishes of the, the client. Um, and never wonder when the earthquake happens, as it did a few weeks ago, uh, we had an earthquake, not a single phone call did we get of an issue on any of our projects. Um, and I just don't know that that would happen if I had uh, superintendents out there doing it uh, because I eat, sleep, and breathe this stuff. It, keeps, it wakes me up in the middle of the night. Um, you know, okay, I got to do this. Oh, that's right. I need to do this tomorrow. I got to do that. Um, I'll go out there on a Saturday just to make sure something was done and it doesn't interfere with what we're doing on a Monday morning. So, um, number one, don't I, have, don't I have extra time because there's no, uh, there's no other speaker? Um, you can have we probably have, uh, have a question or seven. Anybody have questions, comments, or complaints? Bruce? <laughs> complaints. Yes. How big of a team this is a complaint yeah. office over here. Um, I know you get a lot of subs and yeah. everything, but generally speaking, how big is your team? How big of a team? That's, a, that's an excellent question. I get that frequently. Um, how big of a team do I have? Um, and everything I do is subcontracted out. And people typically have a, a preconceived notion of what that means. Uh, I have, I'll tell you a quick story, and it totally relates to, uh, to what you're talking about. Basically, my team is my designer, 
um, my engineer, uh, and me. Um, and the rest of it is all subcontracted. Um, many years ago, I had a, uh, had a mechanical engineer friend who was in the um, commercial and industrial business, did a lot of uh, brewery, work at breweries and refineries, and had a wife and two kids. And we were sitting around having lunch one day, and he said, so you got some projects coming up? I said, yeah. He said, so what are you doing? You're, you're sending out your drawings to three electricians and three plumbers, et cetera, et cetera. I said, oh, no. I said, I use the same subcontractors every time. And he said, you're an idiot. And I said, really? <laughs> Tell me more. Um, because he knew everything. This, I mean, you got to meet this guy. He knows everything about everything. So, um, so I kind of put him in his place at that point. I said, OK, so I said, you hire me to do your project on your home. And you go to work every day. Your wife goes to work every day. Or maybe she doesn't. Maybe she, maybe she sits around and hangs out in the pool. You have your two kids and all of your stuff, all of your belongings in your house. And I'm doing a room addition or remodel. We're there for three months every day. You're not there. You give us a key to the house. We have full access to the house. I said, now then, do you want me to bring out an electrician and a plumber and a drywall crew that was the lowest bidder? Or do you want me to bring people out there who I've been working with for 15, 20, 25 years who consider me to be a big part of their income, who rely on me for work, and who I completely trust? Or do you want me to just send out the low bidder who I maybe have used once before? And he immediately said, I got it. I get it. I totally get it. It's not industrial. It's not commercial. He said, you're doing it the right way. I said, Thank you. So that's, that's how we operate. Um, I can. Sometimes I have two jobs going at a time. Sometimes I have seven jobs. And my guys are always ready, willing, and able to, to make things work for us. Any complaints, I will direct you to my complaint department, <laughs> which unfortunately is me, again. Um, your yeah, yeah, soon it will be my daughter. Um, any other questions or comments? Nothing? Good, good question. Yeah. Um, typical like change uh, or add uh, to the second story, mm -hmm. and then you know how you have to support that and everything. Um, <clears throat> that one deal was like two hundred thousand. That'd be pretty common. Right? Yes. Yeah. You're. You're. Square feet. You're definitely going to be over a hundred thousand if you. You might be able to do a two-story for less than 100000 but there's so much engineering involved and so much rework of the existing that has to be done and reinforcing of the existing. Um, and a lot of times, people want to add a master suite. They have three bedrooms, and they want to add a master suite because they need four bedrooms. So oftentimes, we have to take one of the bedrooms to create a stairway. So they think they want to add, they're going to add a, a master suite, and we ended up adding, we end up adding two bedrooms. Uh, and maybe two bathrooms upstairs, so it ends up being bigger than what they expect sometimes. What does that cost two bedrooms and two bathrooms? <laughs> I, 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 knew, I knew somebody was going to ask me that. Um, it's, it's, it's really square foot driven, but um, two bedrooms and two bathrooms upstairs is probably. <laughs> yeah, you're probably north of 150. 150, yeah. Can you be more exact? <laughs> it's it's between one hundred twenty and six hundred thousand dollars. But I can come out and give you a better estimate if you want. He wants to be more accurate. Yeah. Any other questions or comments, Scott Macklin? I see a lot. My parents live in the seventies neighborhoods, and people will buy those lots. And when they renovate, they take down everything but the garage, and then build a whole new house there. Actually. Yes. I've been told that's for code. I mean, is it, is it reasonable? Is that probably for code? Is it why, why, do, why do they leave part of the building standing up? Um, each city has their own requirements. Some of them allow you to, or some of them force you to uh, leave one wall up or two walls, or uh, some of them actually force you to leave an entire room intact. So you design this new mansion around a den. Uh, something to that effect, but it's um, it's always so that somebody said it already, so that it can be considered a room addition slash remodel versus new construction. Um, new construction is a different animal. They typically will make you flip the soil. 
if you scrape if you scrape the lot completely, they'll say, "Awesome, we're glad you did that." Now dig down three feet, take all that soil out of there, three feet, pile it up, and then put it back in six-inch increments and compact it, and have it tested, and then do six more inches, compact it, have it tested, and you quickly add another eight, twelve grand to it, uh, just to do that. The other thing is. If you've been in the house a long time, your property tax, you may be sitting on a $600,000 house and you have a property tax base value of 200000 If you scrape it and start over and now you have a $1.2 million house, you've got a property tax base of $1.2 million. Versus the other one, you've, you start off with two hundred, dollars and maybe you do $600,000 worth of work, now you have a property tax base of 800000 So it saves on property tax, permit fees, um, soils engineering, stuff like that. Saves a lot of money. Yes? When you finish, you leave the garage and finish the remodel, then how long do you have to wait before you can go? <laughs> tear, tear down the garage, <laughs> rebuild that. Um, it's probably a city by city thing. Huntington Beach uh, has a deal where you can only add like, it's 40 or 50 percent. So if you have a like a 1,200 square foot house, you can only add like 600 square feet. Anything more than that, it, it gets into a, a major hassle. Um, that is a, a 12 month deal. So you'd have to, you know, do it and then wait a year and then do something. So I think that's probably the answer. You have to wait a year. Jim. I have a, I have a friend down in uh, Ondawa, Minnesota, on the ocean side, ocean front, and he wanted to put a second story on his house, an older house, and he wanted to put a second story on his house, an older house. And instead of, uh, Building up. He had the whole house lifted up and he built underneath it. Wow. Wow. And he said that he actually saved him money because, first of all, he didn't save the roof, but because of the uh, foundation, the bad foundation, or no foundation, he had to build that anyway. Right. And he ended up saving him a lot of money by lifting the whole house up. That's amazing. I've never heard of that. We have, we have moved a garage um, on, on a project. The garage was here and it needed to be over there in the new scope and it was less money to hire a company to come out and move it than to tear it down and rebuild it. But I've never, and of course you, you've probably seen the ones where they put it on a trailer and they move it across town. Uh, they do that with a lot of historic buildings uh, in Orange and Pasadena. Uh, but I've never heard of them raising it. That's, uh, that's amazing. The pictures are amazing, yeah. Did they, did they like move it over? Here and then build the, the first floor and then they lift it up and put it, up and it was on and these, on these built underneath it. They built a uh, structure to hold it up and they just built the home under it. And they built, they built it That's awesome. Wow. Contractors and engineers, aren't they the brightest people on the planet? <laughs> aren't they? Oh, <laughs> What, what would we do without bridges and elevators and skyscrapers and lions and tigers and bears? Oh my. Yes. Anything else? Good job. All right, thank you. All right.